2022 Kentucky Town Board Meeting. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Supervisor Clayton. Here. Councilman Creedy. Here. Councilman Esposito. Here. Councilman Dunn. Here. Deputy Supervisor Cooper. Councilman Dunn. Here, Councilman Muscle. Present. Uh, I'm going to ask our Marine on the board, Councilman Dennis. Come to release in the Pledge of Allegiance. All wise, face the American flag. Place your white hand over your heart to join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Madam Clerk, please call the first item. On our first public hearing, we have a petition of the Commissioner of Buildings to demolish and remove a two-story wood frame dwelling with two car detached garage and to remove all litter and debris from the property in Merrick. Okay, any member of the board wish to hear on this? If not, I do not have any slips. Is any member of the public wish to hear on item number one that did not sign in for it? If not, may I please have a motion? Make a motion to close the hearing and we Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman Diaz Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosting. Aye. Councilman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscle. Aye. Madam Clerk, please fill the next item. We have a petition of the Commissioner of Buildings to demolish and remove a two-story wood frame, one-family dwelling removed, and to remove all litter and debris from the property located in Union Okay, remember the board which we heard? I did not have any slips. Is any member of the public that did not sign in? It was we heard on item number two. If not, may I please have a motion? I move that we pass a motion. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Corini. Aye. Councilman D'Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Musgrove. Aye. Clerk, please go to the next item. We have a petition of the Commissioner of Buildings to demolish and remove a one-story wood frame, one-family dwelling with attached garage, and to remove all litter and debris from a property located in Westbury. Any member of the board wish to be heard of this? I do not have any slips. Any member of the public did not sign in. We should be on item number three. If not, may I please have a motion? Can you make a motion to close and accept? Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman D'Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Madam Clerk, please go ahead. We have a proposed local law regarding regulations and restrictions to limit parking in Merrick and North Lawrence. Member of the board, which we heard. We have any slips? Any member of the public did not sign in. We should be heard on item number four. If not, may I please have a motion? I move the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman Lee Esposito. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Bruce Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Madam Clerk, please go to the next item. We have a proposed local law regarding parking or standing prohibitions in Baldwin Island Park in North Baldwin. Any member of the board wish to be heard? Do not have any slips in item number five. If anybody did not sign in, we should be heard item number five. If not, may I please have a motion? Please. I move the public hearing be closed and the item adopted. Thank you. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman D'Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Madam Clerk, please call the next item. We have a proposed local law regarding arterial stops in Island Park, Levittown, and Roosevelt. Any member of the board wish to be heard on this? I do not have any slips. Any member of the public did not sign in that wishes to be heard on this item? If not, may I please have a motion? Supervisor, I move the public hearing be closed and the local law adopted. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman D'Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. And of course, let's go to the next item. We have a proposed local law regarding traffic regulations in the vicinity of schools in Levittown. Okay, any member of the board wish to be heard on this? I do not have any slips. Does anybody wish to be heard on this item that did not sign it for item number seven? If not, may I please have a motion? Move the hearing to close and the item adopted. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman D'Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. 
uh, construed to say otherwise, uh, it's still the responsibility of this town board to do this in a timely manner. And that's all I'm saying. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. Um, I don't have any other slips on this. Any member of the public did not sign in that wish to be heard on this item? If not, I please have a motion. Supervisor, I move that the public hearing be closed. The proposed renewal contract for the Angle C Fire Protection District be approved. Yes, sorry. Supervisor, please. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman Diaz Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Guzman. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Madam Clerk, let's go to the next item. We have a proposed renewal contract for furnishing fire protection districts within the East Lawrence Fire Protection District. Any member of the board should be heard on this? I don't have any slips. Any member of the public did not sign in, we should be heard on item number 11. If not, may I please have a motion? I move the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman Diaz-Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boothby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Please go on time. Proposed renewal of contract for furnishing fire protection within the Green Acres Mall Fire Protection District. Remember the board wish we heard? I do not have any slips. Say a member of the public wish we heard on item number 12. If not, may I please have a motion? Move the public hearing be closed and board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Madam Clerk, please come on next time. We have a proposed renewal contract for fire protection within the Hempstead Plains Fire Protection District. Any member of the board wish to be heard? I do not have any slips. Any member of the public wish to be heard on this item? Not sent in. Not may please have a motion. I make a motion that the hearing be closed and accepted. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. And clerk, please go to the next item. We have a proposed renewal contract for furnishing fire protection within the Millbrook Fire Protection District. No, that was slips. The board member should be heard. Any member of the public should be heard. Do not sign in. If not, may I please have a motion. I move the hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman D. Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Madam Clerk, please go to the next item. We have a proposed renewal contract for fire protection within the Roosevelt Field Fire Protection District. A member of the board wish to be heard. I do not have any slips. Any member of the public wish to be heard at the center? If not, may I please have a motion. Yep. I move that the proposed uh, renewal be accepted. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Tuesby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Madam Clerk, please call the next item. <laughs> A proposed renewal of a contract for furnishing fire protection services within the Silver Point Fire Protection District. Do not have any board want to be heard? Don't have any slips? Anybody not signing? We should be heard on this item. If not, may I please have a motion? Move the public hearing be closed and the board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. It's an item. Councilman Carini. Uh, Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Madam Clerk, please go to the next item. We have a proposed renewal contract for furnishing fire protection services within the South Franklin Square Fire Protection District. Any board members should be heard? I do not have any slips. Anybody in the public want to be heard who did not sign in? If not, may I please have a motion? I make a motion that you be closed and accepted. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Diaz Castillo. Aye. Done. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Please go on next time. We have a proposed renewal contract for fire protection within the Southwest Fire Protection District. Any board member want to be heard? I don't have any slips. Any member of the public wish to be heard this? If not, I have a motion. I make the motion that you may be closed and accepted. Second. Supervisor Clayton. That's an affirmative. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. 
uh, tanks, a one-story building to the east of the islands that is used as an automobile service facility and associated facilities. Uh, the existing improvements for the gasoline service station were approved by the board uh, by resolutions granted in 1993. Uh, at the easterly end of the premises, uh, there is a two-story residential building. Uh, that building was constructed in or about 1959. Uh, and there were some improvements made to it in 1988. That is lot 111. Uh, my client acquired that property in 2015. At the time of acquisition and presently, that property is vacant. There is no one uh, inhabiting that property. Uh, and in fact, uh, my client has registered it with the town as a vacant property. It's gutted and it's not suitable for habitation now. That's a very unique parcel because most of the parcel, which overall is approximately 11,130 square feet, is zoned business. So it's a non conforming, formally used residential building in the business zone, except for a small triangular portion of approximately. 228 square feet that is located adjacent to Sawmill Road. Mr. Tarpaglia and Mr. Nelson will talk about that further in their uh, presentations to the board. Uh, the proposal today is to rezone the small residential portion of that property to be included in the business X district and then to include that property, as well as the existing gasoline service facility, into the GSA, GSS Overlay District. Uh, the proposal contemplates uh, this discontinuing the automobile service facility and converting that building, renovating it, converting it, remodeling it, uh, for a convenience store in the typical brand of a BP to go convenience store. Uh, as I mentioned, the existing gasoline station was approved by the board in 1993 and has operated continuously since that time as such. The proposed utilization of the site also includes uh, the installation of substantial landscaping to screen the property uh, at the easterly side behind the convenience store. The installation of new grade level parking that complies with the code at the rear of the convenience store. In other words, on the east side of the convenience store. Uh, and the closure of two of the existing curb cuts on Stall Mill Road. Those are the two easterly most curb cuts and in place of those curb cuts shown on the site plan before the board, uh, new landscaping would be uh, situated and constructed. That landscaping area both on the sawmill road side and the east side will be fully irrigated so that uh, it will remain in good condition. Uh, the board is familiar with the area I know, and as Mr. Nelson will testify, there are other similar uses of gasoline service stations with convenience stores in the immediate vicinity. Uh, respectfully, based on the testimony that will be presented, uh, we do submit to the board that this will be a significant improvement to the premises. Uh, it will remove a house that is not habitable, improve it with only a grade level parking area that is already zoned business, and convert a older service facility into a modern, safe, convenience store. Uh, unless there are any questions of me, I'd like to ask Mr. Carcaglia to come forward and give his presentation. Thank you, Supervisor. Okay.
Ms. Victoria Highway, if you give your name and address. Thank you, Michael. For the record, my name is Chris Tartaglia, principal owner of the firm High Point Engineering with offices at 1860 Walt Whitman Road, Melville, New York. Mr. Zupar, members of the board, uh, Mr. Son has uh, done a fantastic job of describing the application. I just want to highlight a couple of points um, just to ensure the board and, and the folks in the audience understand uh, what exactly is proposed here. So the existing building itself of just under 1,200 square feet is not changing in size and not being expanded. The two automobile service bays are being discontinued and removed and the entire building is being converted into a convenience store. This is a common occurrence throughout the town and, and basically the, uh, the island in general. Uh, service bays are becoming less and less more viable in terms of a uh, business use. Um, when we sat down with uh, Mr. Leon several years ago to discuss this project, um, we talked about doing a conversion of the site as it sat with the size of the site without adding the adjoining residential parcel. And one of the things that became inherently obvious was that there was really no room for parking. And obviously when you create a convenience store use, some of the customers, albeit a small amount, um, are looking to park uh, and go into the store, not necessarily avail themselves of the gasoline sales, but we do find in stores of this size that the predominant customers do get gas first and then walk into the store. Along those lines, uh, Mr. Leon purchased the property to the east to create that area that's to the east of the building as shown up on the screen for parking and circulation behind the building. There will be an entrance door in the rear of the building as well as one in the front so that gas customers can make their way into the building and uh, perform their transaction and also folks availing themselves of the convenience store can get into the rear of the building. As is shown by the green areas on the east and south sides of the lot along Sawmill Road, we are providing landscaping everywhere on this property that is feasible to, uh, to provide. Same, um, just areas that are used for buildings, parking, and access aisles obviously cannot be landscaped. In terms of lighting, right now there is a light pole that is directly south of the building, the existing building that does spill lighting onto Sawmill Road. That light pole is being removed, and the nearest light poles are being relocated approximately 40 feet inboard northerly on the property. Uh, the, in terms of access, the access points on Jerusalem Avenue, two curve cuts are remaining the same. The access into the gas station on Sawmill River Road are remaining the same. There are two curve cuts, as Mr. Son mentioned, that are a little bit further east, which are being closed as a result of this, and again, the landscaped areas will go in the way of those curb cuts. Um, that's really the substance of the application. There's no changes to the pump islands, there's no changes to the tanks. Essentially, the addition of the property here is the key element of the application to create parking and landscaping areas, and also um, the existing underground storage tanks were replaced years ago. They are in full compliance with current regulations, double wall fiberglass, um, and exceed local regulations and requirements. Uh, if the board has any questions, I am here for the duration. Um, if not, I will turn it over to the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I please introduce Mr. Barry Nelson? Uh, we're first very excited about this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Supervisor, members of the board. The record is Barry Nelson, 220 Pettit Avenue, Belmore, New York, 11710. I'll start off. I do have some photographs of the subject property and surrounding uses. Right, uh, they're great. Somebody can just go in the back there and grab it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. You've heard the crux of the application, and what I did is I provided photographs of the subject property, both parcels, and the surrounding uses found on Jerusalem Avenue, Sawmill Road, and some other similar type of gas and sea stores that would be found in the North Bank Belmont locale along Jerusalem Avenue. 
beginning, if you look at the uh, official zoning map of the town of Hempstead, and more specifically maps number 88 and 89, you'll find that the typical zoning along Jerusalem Avenue, both on the north side and the south side, as is common throughout the town of Hempstead, is zoned business, typically 100 feet deep, deep on both the north and south side. Various locations, it'll extend further than 100 feet. Directly opposite the subject property was a rezoning to a CA zoning back in the uh, mid-1960s. So what you find on the north side, opposite the subject property, beginning from Little Neck Road, or Little Neck Avenue, going east, is two garden apartment type uh, setups, apartment cooperatives, and they would be the CA zoning running from Little Neck Avenue east, east of the subject property. The development in the subject block, the subject block on the south side of so, um, Jerusalem Avenue is 100 feet deep business zone from the triangle point of the subject property on the westerly side up to the easterly um, block, which would be Midwood. The single family homes along uh, Sawmill Road is well maintained, colonial ranches, Cape Cods, and high ranches in design. Many of the parcels that were formerly or early in the 1950s, 1960s along Jerusalem Avenue, including in the subject property, have changed their usage from the single family to mixed use offices, professional uses, and there are two family dwellings in the uh, um, vicinity of the subject property, including on the uh, south side of Sawmill Road. The Fellier Nursing Home would generally be just to the west of the subject property, west of Little Neck Avenue. As Councillor mentioned, the crux of this application is to rezone a small portion of tax lot 111 where the residence exists. What you have is that parcel is approximately 6,214 square feet in totality, approximately over 5,000 square feet is 5,972 square feet is in the business zone. So you have a small portion, and how does that small portion come about to be the residential B district? As I mentioned earlier, typically you'll find the business zone ribbon, both on the north side and south side, 100 feet deep. The easterly side of the uh, at tax lot 111 is approximately 113 feet deep. On the westerly side is approximately 80 feet. So there's a triangle portion, and that would be the landscape uh, area generally at the southeast corner of the subject parcel that's up in front of the uh, on the screens. The property, that portion of the property has been vacant for and unoccupied for many, many years. It'll be removed for, as you noticed, landscaping and approximately seven on-site parking spaces. The curb cuts both on the north side and the south side of that parcel will be eliminated, so there'll be no access to the Jerusalem Avenue corridor or to the Sawmill Road corridor. The service station, so you're taking approximately 14 to 1,500 square feet of building area, removing it, and now providing landscaping and parking on that property. The building itself with the service base uh, exists today, will be totally renovated and upgraded for the convenience store. There'll be no enlargement of that building as you see it is today, exists today. Otherwise, that's the crux of this application and to include the entire parcel as a modification to the GSSN uh, uh, overlay district. In, this, uh, in my process of uh, preparation for this today's hearing, 
I've investigated and looked at many other locations, and there are many locations throughout the town and on Jerusalem Avenue, the northeast corner of Jerusalem Avenue and Belmore Road, a removal of a service station, a building to the east, and now is a 7-Eleven gas and convenience store. If we go to the west, you'll have similar locations at uh, the northwest, southwest corners of Newbridge Road and Jerusalem Avenue. This parcel is a unique parcel in that it's a triangular parcel. And if we go further along to the west in the North Belmore locale, you come to somewhat a similar parcel that was before this board several years ago, approximately 2015, maybe 2014. It was a service station. It's a triangular parcel at the south triangle of Belmore Avenue, Park Avenue, on Jerusalem Avenue. That is a parcel size smaller than the subject property at approximately 12,100 square feet. It has a convenience C store, which was the renovation of an existing repair shop at approximately 1,800, almost 1,900 square feet. And it is similar while it's oriented north and south and the subject property is east and west, the subject property is a larger parcel and lot area and it, it has a much smaller city convenience store at approximately rounded at 1,200 square feet. I looked at that parcel carefully. It's a new parcel and approximately 60, uh, new development for the gas store, it is a PP station, and looked at it and had an impact the residential community surrounding that property, both on Belmore Avenue and Park Avenue, where the residents abut that property, and to the uh, south of Sheila Place. Property values continue to appreciate, consistent with the surrounding areas. In fact, a uh, uh, resale of uh, one of the houses on there showed within the De uh, development time after the conversion of the repair shop to the C store. Resale at 1224 Belmore Avenue showed that it increased consistent with other homes in the area outside the commercial uh, development. Nevertheless, the impact of um, the commercial use is already existing, it has been existing. The station's been there since 1959. The house will be removed for landscaping and parking. The single family house to the east has already been impacted by the commercial use of the Long Jerusalem Avenue. And in fact, the applicant is proposing a better development with landscaping to that single residence to the east because if you look at my photographs, the property to the east of that single residence, both of those parcels are in the business zone. They provide, it's an office building, one story. They provide parking on the westerly side or the easterly side of the westerly side of their building, the easterly side of that single family residence, right up to the property line. We're providing a minimum of 12 feet on the northerly side. 17 feet of landscape buffer to that single family, which is in a business zone. In my opinion, this is a reasonable request for that subject property, it's unique, and for this area. Again, no access from that parcel anymore. Curb cuts cleaned up and it's strictly going to be utilized for parking and landscaping to a C store and a uh, gas station that's been existing for since 1959. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Any questions? I'll remain. Does that conclude your? Yes, sir. Okay, I have the thumb. It's my district. I'll let it. Absolutely. Council, do you before you go, Councilman, I just want to see if Mr. Sun had anybody else doing any other testimony. 
for the council. No, that's our uh, presentation. Chief, I, I just want to mention to the board that last week I did have one phone call uh, concerning the application from one of the residents on the sawmill, uh, and that is Mr. And I apologize if I don't pronounce his name correctly. Uh, Jokic, who is at uh, 2540 Stormer Road. He's across from one of the curb cuts that's going to be uh, closed up if uh, the board grants the application. I sent him a copy of all the plans, uh, but that was the only communication I had directly with any resident. Okay. I know Councilor Dunn had a couple of questions. Yes, on that. please, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm very aware of people who live in the area have knocked on their doors and they're charming, wonderful folks, yeah. but they will not hesitate to call me if there's a problem. So here's what uh, I want to prevent uh, any problem by just asking a few questions and hopefully we'll be able to do it. Okay. Uh, the overnight outdoor storage of automobiles is not going to happen yet. Absolutely. No need not. for it, correct? Correct. Good. And you're giving me answers in case they ask, okay? Yes. The, uh, Let's see, the, 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 you don't have a speaker system where you're telling people what to do from the inside that would be too loud that the neighbors would hear it. No, uh, no, no speaker systems of that nature. Excellent. The uh, subject property, um, I don't want to mention the here's, here's, Where's the dumpster going to be? It looks in the picture like there's a, a chain link fence that's going to be surrounding where the dumpster is in one of the photos on yeah. page six in the, in the book that you gave me. Yeah. And um, if it is, uh, it, it, am I correct in saying that's where the dumpster is going to be? There is a... By, by the house? Uh, there is a proposed dumpster uh, that is on the east through east side. There we are. We're focusing on it. Uh, and that would be embedded, so to speak, into the landscape area. It will have concrete masonry walls around it, uh, steel doors, so it will be entirely secured and covered and surrounded by the landscaping at all times. As you see on Belmore Road and Belmore Avenue and Park Avenue, uh, they have avenues around it that really uh, stop the noise and the smell and the and that's what you're going to have professional landscapers put in what, what's been done in other gifts. That's, that's correct. Mr. Tagli, do you want to add any comment on that? Sure. Thank you for the question, Councilman. Yes. Um, so the crack enclosure will be a masonry block, six feet tall, solid masonry block, um, steel uh, doors so that they don't get damaged. And yes, it is completely surrounded by arborvitaes, which will be installed at six feet tall at the time of planting. As you've seen at that other state, and, uh, they only take a few years to get really big. So uh, they will do a great job of shielding that, that structure. Okay, now the, the lack of parking, you're not going to have cars for sale or any, no boats, <laughs> none of that stuff for sale because there's, there's no room. Is that my happening? No automobiles for sale. Uh, the new parking is compliant with the code. We have uh, the required uh, accessibility uh, for uh, persons with any disabilities, including the uh, parking spaces and the access and egress uh, from the convenience store. Okay, talking about people with disabilities, the seniors and those with disabilities, will there be somebody that will, if they need somebody to pump the gas for them, they'll come out and pump the gas for them? Correct. Just as in the in the current situation. The, um, okay, so no sales or leases of cars, trucks, boats, or other motor vehicles. That's, that's correct. Okay. We're, we're eliminating all of those potential uh, issues with the closure of the automobile service facility. Okay. And you'll make sure that the property is constantly cleared of all debris at all times? Correct. The, uh, and, and Mr. Leon is here, and, and of course we'll verify that with appropriate covenants. I'm, I'm certain the board would want. Uh, the exterior lights uh, are going to be located and shielded so 
not to interfere with any of the surrounding houses? Uh, that's correct. As shown on the plan, and Mr. Tara Taglia mentioned, some of the lights are being removed and new ones are being placed that would have the shielding on them. You have a landscape plan that they, they will constantly keep up the landscape. So that, that's correct. Be ready. It, it looks like it, you do a good job, but uh, I just have to ask these questions. Oh, by all means. And, and Mr. Leon, again, is here to uh, express that himself. Okay, so between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. will be full service, or what's the hours? Uh, this will be this will be a self-service station as it is now, okay, so and the the hours are proposed to be the 24-hour operation. But there are hours, as in the existing covenant, when uh, persons who are in need uh, would have the gasoline. Uh, pumped for them. Like the fencing, you're going to have the uh, the finished side uh, maintained in good condition the whole time, and it should be facing the neighbors. The finished side of the fencing. Correct. That's correct. Um, food deliveries. Uh, they're not going to interfere with uh, not going to happen at night, and the the dumpster removal and the uh, fuel deliveries, uh, they're going to get hours that aren't going to be disturbing the neighborhood. Uh, correct, guys, just as with the present operation. And the deliveries to the uh, proposed convenience store really would be from smaller type vehicles. It's, it's a relatively small facility at uh, 1100 square feet. And, and the people that go into the convenience part of it, uh, They'll be parking on the road and running in and running out. It'll be momentarily. It's not going to be a long-term park where they're going to hang out because they don't want kids hanging out there. And, no. no. In fact, in fact, you know, one of the benefits we respectfully uh, believe uh, come with this application is to remove the uh, house that is not occupied, been there for many years, so that could attract transient type people. And uh, in this fashion, the parking is more than adequate for uh, briefly coming in, securing a transaction, and leave, leaving the premises. I think, and there will be selling beer, I'm sure, like all convenience stores do. Uh, they won't be selling vapes, or will they be selling vapes, or uh, marijuana, or any of that? Just want to make sure. Mr. Lee, I, I don't believe Mr. Okay. Lee, am I correct? No, no. Okay, All right. hey, thank you so much. All right, thank you, we appreciate it. Thank you, Council. Ms. Sun, what's the uh, hours of operation right now? Uh, the uh, hours of operation presently end at 10 p.m. Okay. So this is gonna be 24 hours. And then the other thing is on the east side of the store, what is it, four parking spots? Uh, no. <laughs> Let's focus in on that. Okay, okay, so I'm looking at the top. I'm looking at the top when you drive in. I have it. I see that like it's, it's broken off. That looks like it's sort of a like a, a turning kind of open. And I see one, two, three, four. Is that the fifth one down the bottom, right? Yes. That's okay. It. And then I see where you put the dumpster. And right now I notice the dumpster is like on the side of the building from a picture you submitted, not me. Um, what time are they going to pick up the garbage? Well. Well, that's your math. I'm just asking because you, you, right now you have a dumpster. You, you, you submit a photo with a dumpster on the side. There is a dumpster on the side. Right, you're proposing putting a dumpster in the back and of a 24, and I just got to know when you think you're going to potentially have a pickup because you got the spot, spots back there. That's correct. So uh, it would be during the what I would call the regular type daytime hours, not late evening or nighttime or no, not early, early not night. like four or five in the morning, right? No, no. absolutely not. Maybe an early person. No, yeah. no absolutely. And, and those hours are uh, subject to regulation for the time. Okay. Also, I noticed that, uh, and uh, Mr. Mr. Nelson, with his inspiring testimony as always, uh, submitted a couple of photos. 
Um, in, in fact, uh, again, he, he submitted these. I did notice that a couple of new structures, like the, the 7-Eleven, he sent uh, the picture of it, uh, has some, it looks like a, some almost some fake stone six foot fencing, and a couple of other ones have fencing, and then, uh, you know, greenery abutting the fencing. So are you guys just proposing a fence or a combination of the two? Or, you know, like I said, he submitted them, so I'm just trying to get an idea of what you're, you're thinking about for the residents. Well, uh, as shown on the plan, we have a very substantial buffer area. I, I got you. Yeah. I, it's green. Okay, great. Right. What, what's, is there a fence there with buffer, or is it just buffer? Yes, there'll be a PVC fence. Okay, how, how high? perimeter. Six feet. Six feet? Okay. That's, that's on the Six feet PVC, so it's good on both sides. Perfect. Okay. Uh, we got a couple of residents that, that want to, you know, have some comments too, so we can stick around for them, that'd be awesome. Of course. Thank you so much. Well, hold on, wait, Councilman uh, Ms. Carly. I have a question. Is the owner and the operator the same person, or is it lead, uh, rented out to somebody? Uh, the, the, the owner of the property. The owner of the property is Leon Petroleum, and they will have, as they typically do, <coughs> at present, a uh, individual who is the dealer at the premises. But Leon Petroleum assumes all responsibility for the day-to-day -day operation. Okay, so you're saying it's owner occupied or it's rented to a it, It's rented to a dealer operator. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Sonner. Thank you. No problem. Like I said, stick around, I've got a bunch of residents. Um, first, I have Amir and Samar. How you doing? Uh, any speakers, if you go back to the podium and give your name and address for the record, that would be great. Thank you very much. Hi. Hello everyone, my name is Amir Marfani, and I'm the resident at 2546 Solomon Road, and I live right across from the gas station. Um, I have some concern, um, and this is yeah, and uh, that's the reason I'm here. I'm going to have my photo speech first, and then I'm going to follow the speech. Okay. Uh, everybody gets, you, you just, it's going to be three minutes for each of you, so I just want to let you know. If you switch over, they're going to switch the clock on you. And if you could just give your name and address, yeah. I'm Summer Marfani. I'm from 2546 Alma Road. Um, I just want to say good morning, and I'm here to speak on the issue regarding this expansion of the property. I would like to begin speaking on the question of whether it's safe or not. Personally, I don't feel super safe. There's already so many people in and out of that area, in the gas station, and hanging around, there, hanging around there. And I also see how many kids on my block are always playing outside, and our neighbors are walking. I feel like with the expansion of this property, there will be an increase not only in the amount of people, but the amount of traffic. The street that we live on is already so narrow with cars parked on both sides. I'm a new driver and it's almost impossible for residents here to safely pull in and out of their driveways and take off. I can't imagine with the expansion how many more cars will be flooding the streets. This is a neighborhood that has recently had a lot of children and I see them playing every single day outside whether it's biking or throwing snowballs. I can't imagine these kids having to stay indoors because there are random people right across the street or due to all the traffic. This decision, I feel like, is not safe nor healthy for our neighborhood. Thank you for listening. Just, just a, a, a quick uh, note of you're, You said you're on Soma Road? Yeah. And what number, just tell you another picture. If you were looking at your door, what would you say right now? 2546. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Thank, thank you both very, very much. Next, I have Nita Tijoki. I live at 2540 Sawmill Road, so when I look out my dining room window, I'll be looking at the parking lot. Um, I'm going to try to make this as brief as possible. Um, I'm obviously opposing this matter. I, myself, have two children, one on the way. My neighbors who just bought the house in January have two kids. Their neighbors have four kids. Two houses down have eight kids. Anyone who comes down our block will see our block flooded with kids every single day, playing outside all day. 
When I bought the house, I bought it knowing that I didn't love this establishment, but that's not what I'm disputing. I ended up buying the house knowing that, okay, this service station closes. I mean, they said 10 o'clock, but the lights are off by 8 o'clock. The gas station pretty much, the gas attendant pretty much leaves at 9. The convenience store that's there now is very limited in what they sell, so it doesn't attract a lot of people in and out. It's a very quiet establishment in terms of who comes in and out. Now we're going to open a 20, and again, I wanted to ask, they mentioned 24 hours. Is that a 24-hour convenience store? Is that a 24-hour just for the gas station? I live across the street. My husband works overnights. I'm alone with my kids all the time. What kind of crowd is this going to be bringing in? As they mentioned, they just opened a 7-Eleven, maybe three blocks down. Then to the left, 0.3 miles away, whatever it is, we have a speedway with a full service station, a convenience store. Across the street from that, we have a BP. I understand if this would benefit our community. I don't see any benefit to this at all, except for more foot traffic, more car traffic. Who's gonna be lingering in the parking lot at all hours of the night? What are they gonna be selling? You only touched on vapes and marijuana. How about beer, cigarettes? How about teens lingering in our parking, the driveway that I'm staring at? I'm not, a, I can't read the map very well, but from what I saw, the map, they talked about the landscaping a lot. We heard a lot of reference about landscaping. The fence that I saw on the map, I read four feet. I, maybe I misread that, but they mentioned six feet. I didn't really see that. Maybe I'm wrong, but whatever you guys decide, if it goes forward or not, we want a taller fence. I only saw a fence along, and she's here, she's going to speak, along the house who will be in back of and back of it, um, we'd love a fence if this goes through all around on the Sawmill side. The street is narrow enough. People are going to be exiting onto Sawmill, not Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is busy as is. At any given time, you can't even pass by, that you can't even drive down the block on Sawmill without being backed up. You have, there's three cars ahead of you waiting for other people coming off of Jerusalem to come into our block. It's just beyond congested. All right, that's all I have. I'll leave it to the other people. Thank you. Can, Thank they, you address, very much. can they address that? Yeah, I was going to say, Mr. Sant, you want to address a couple of the concerns you brought? We also have a petition. A lot of our fellow neighbors couldn't be here today because, unfortunately, we'll, it's held at we'll, the we'll be, we'll be happy to, to accept the petition. We'll have the clerk's uh, office take it right now, okay? We'll make it part of the record. Okay, I had more questions, but I didn't have enough time to ask. Oh, it's okay. You know, I, and like I said, you know, uh, don't know what, what how we're going to do it, but. Uh, Let's see how the meeting goes today, okay? The first question she had was uh, the convenience or the gas station is 24 or both? But both are proposed to be 24 hour operation. And both would work obviously in tandem now. And address the hangout part of it. It's not large enough. Tell, tell me. Make well, the. the uh, Real benefit, or one of the real benefits of this is to remove the house that's vacant and unoccupied and has been for many, many years. And there have been uh, situations previously that Mr. Leon has had to deal with to make sure that people were not, transient type people were not, quote unquote, hanging out at that house or behind it in any way. So now, instead of that house, we'll have a clear ground level uh, parking area surrounded by landscaping and fencing. It'll be easy to put police, there'll be security cameras and appropriate lighting. Uh, with respect to fencing, uh, there is, again, the six foot PVC fence along the easterly side but in speaking to Mr. Tartaglia, uh, we can also provide a four-foot PVC type fence along sawmill, either in front of or behind the landscaping that's proposed on sawmill. Uh, I think it would look better personally if it was behind the landscaping, but that's a matter of preference. Uh, and that would, in a sense, fence in that area of the site 
the two speakers who appeared, uh, both are at the uh, area on Sawmill that seems to align where the two curb cuts are now that will be closed. So instead of looking at curb cuts and the side of or and rear of a service building, they would have now instead a view of landscaping and fencing and they would actually have less uh, traffic on the site in front of them and more privacy. All right, when I started, it's a Absolutely, and I'm going to date myself a little bit. <laughs> I must have been just out of law school in 1993 when I had the pleasure to appear for Mr. Leon uh, on the original approvals. And uh, I've been past that site many, many times, and um, I do believe, again, this is my personal observation, that Mr. Leon has done a very fine job maintaining it over the years, as with his other properties, uh, and I know he'll do the same. Okay. All right. Uh, next, uh, we have a lot of residents here. We have Marinko Dejoyek. Good morning, just give me a name and address of the record, thanks. Good morning, my name is Mariko Jokic. I live at 2540 Song Hill Road. I am uh, right across the street, and if you look outside my dining room window, you see the parking lot. And um, so I was raised in Queens. I moved to Long Island, so I wouldn't have to deal with things like this. I grew up in the building, and um, the building had a, a deli, 24 hours, so I know all about the 24-7 convenience store, what it could bring, and um, I'm opposed to it. My wife, my neighbors, we went down the block, the whole block, from, from the corner over here all the way down to the next corner. Nobody wants it. And, um, I don't know what a four foot fence would do. I'm six foot two. I see right over it. But from the other side, they can see me. So I don't know what purpose a four foot fence would be. And um, like uh, my neighbor said, there's a whole bunch of kids playing outside, especially in the summertime. There's about eight. Eight to ten kids at one time riding their bikes, <clears throat> riding their bikes, playing in front on the lawn. We have a blow up castle that we put water in. Kids are splashing. I don't see why or what the need of another one of uh, these convenience stores is. 7 Eleven is right like a two minute walk east, and then you have the Speedway, which is Another couple minute walk to the west. So now this is going to be right in the middle. I don't know. I don't see the point. I don't think there's any reason for it. And um, the neighbor that's right next east of that property, she's here today. And she's going to have to deal with the noise, the traffic. Garbage. I mean, does the garbage, does the garbage smell going to go away? I don't, I don't think so. And that's right next to her door. That's all I got. Any questions? That's a thank. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for taking the time. Next, I have Cynthia Orlando. I hate you, I'm just giving your name and 
introduce the record, thanks. Hi, yes, my name is Cynthia Orlando. Um, my address is 2567 Sawmill Road. Um, I am located just about three houses east of that property on Sawmill Road. Um, I moved, we bought the house and we moved in in 2015. Um, and before I moved in, I would go visit the neighborhood, I would go visit that street, all times of day, all kinds of hours, just to see what kind of block I was moving into. It's a quiet neighborhood, it's full of kids. My child is now five years old. She rides her bike down that street, she rides her, her little cars down that street, and like all my neighbors said, it's full of kids, it's families. Down the block from us is Sawmill Road Elementary School, the biggest elementary school in North Belmore. It's full of families. It has a lot of, of cars that are coming up and down the block, you know, uh, moms, dads dropping off their kids. We have the school buses, we have the bus stops, you know, and all along Sawmill Road. It's just going to cause a lot of backup, a lot of traffic, unnecessary traffic. And I know that they say they're, they're closing the curb cutoffs. However, you're still going to have people that are going to come and park on Sawmill Road because they're not going to park on Jerusalem. There's not going to be spaces there. They're going to come park on Sawmill Road and take up the spots and park in front of our houses. And, and for what? There's no need for this. There's already, like everyone mentioned, there's a speedway. There's another BP, just a half a mile west, and then the 7-Eleven, another less than half a mile east, with a convenience store. And like they mentioned, it's already, you know, it's a quiet block. The place closed earlier throughout, you know, the night, and now we're having something that's 24 hours. I don't feel safe having something that's open 24 hours on my block. Who knows what kinds of people are gonna come in the middle of the night. It's already quiet and, 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 and peaceful. So now we're going to make it busier. And as you can see on that triangle part, there's no stop sign there. There's no stoplight there. It's already very hard to make a left turn or even a right turn, especially at 5 o'clock or at 8.30 in the morning or 9 in the morning when kids, you know, when parents are dropping off their kids or when people are just backing up down Jerusalem. So this is going to make it even more of an inconvenience. So that's just my... You know, and as I've seen on, you know, on the map, it didn't say anything about a six-foot fence, either on the sawmill side or that backs up the, that house. So if it does, you know, end up going forward, we do want it, you know, to have a higher fence and, you know, maybe, hopefully, we can just not have it to be 24 hours because I just, you know, like I said, we don't feel safe. We're a block full of families and children. We just don't want that. We don't need that. Thank you, Mr. Lennon. Thanks for coming in today. Uh, next, I have Brian O'Toole. Good morning, sir. Just give me a name and address for the record. Thanks. Yeah, good morning. Brian O'Toole, 2553 Townhouse Circle. I live directly behind the house of the lady you spoke from. Um, from my bedroom window, I can see the lights of the gas station up till 10 o'clock at night. I oppose the 24 hour uh, exception to this. Also, the um, the curb cuts. There's a, there's, is there a curb cut on Soma Road? They did say there was. Some people said there not. Some said there is from the plant. Also, the if you expand the map out a little bit, I requested several times. So go to the left, please. Go, yeah, further to the left to the next road to the next intersection. So I didn't know that not on that map, but on the corner of um, Little Neck and North Jerusalem. I'm sorry, Little Neck. Avenue in Jerusalem. I have submitted several times for a stoplight to be put there. They did a um, they did a traffic uh, traffic um, review, and they came back with you don't need one. This is a very highly trans tricky, highly you know highly um, a lot of people drive back and forth. Soma Road is a very busy busy area because of the school on Soma Road. Um, there is a high percentage of uh, there's a at least three accidents that I know about on that one specific corner of north of um, Little Neck and North and uh, Jerusalem in the past couple of years, including my mother in law. Um, there's, like other people said, there's a stores within walking distance and there'll be a 24 hour convenience store. And um, there's one more point I want to make. Yeah, so I live directly behind it. If any of you guys want to come over to my house and take a look at my bedroom window at 10 o'clock at night, see what kind of action is taking place there, be more than welcome to come over. 
Okay? And also, the gentleman in the center over there, uh, when people are speaking, you put down your cell phone and stop looking at the uh, Facebook? I'm actually looking at the map. Sorry? I'm looking at the map. Yeah. Uh, no, you weren't, sir. I was watching. Yeah. Thank you very much for not taking that. We have a satellite map on this so we can see better the community. That's why we put the satellite map on. And yeah. Next up, Ann Shulman. We generally have everybody go to the back here. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Good morning. If you just give me name and address for the record, that's great. Yes. My name is Ann Chulman. I live at 2572 Sawmill Road. I've been a resident for 31 years. There is, my neighbors are much kinder than me. There is no reason for the store, 24 hour, hour operation to be in our neighborhood. Previously, years ago, there was a plumbing supply store, which faced Jerusalem Avenue, not facing 10 houses along Sawmill Road. This is a unique piece of property. If you look at the 7-Eleven down the road, the uh, property is a corner property. It affects one house, the side of one house. With this convenience store and gas station, it affects 10 houses, at least. No less the traffic. We already have people speeding down the road as a cut through from <coughs> Russell Avenue that go right through our stop sign daily. Uh, we have many children, including my grandchildren, who play on this block. Uh, this would increase traffic. There is no parking as it stands now. So to have this come to the neighborhood with additional parking, listen, a four-foot fence is not going to help. A privacy bush is not going to help. There is going to be lighting that lights up our neighborhood 24 hours a day. Right now, the gas station closes, I would say, about 9 o'clock. This is a 24-hour store facing our home just not the place for it. I'm just going to check my notes. Looking at the condemned housing, it's not optimal. The condemned house that's on that property now. But it's quiet. In 31 years, I think I had to chase somebody off that property twice. It's not an issue. It's a very quiet neighborhood. We always look out for each other. We look out at that property. We make sure that it's maintained as far as we make sure that somebody's doing what they should be doing. Um, it hasn't been an issue. We have Stop and Shop, which is right down the road. We have 7-Eleven. We have strip malls. This is just not the place for it. When the gas station was putting up the lighting that they have now, the awning over the pumps, we didn't complain. It wasn't as bad. The gas station was there. That, you know, it was the way to go. It was the new thing. When you look at the arrows, if they can blow that up, there's arrows leading right out. You go around the parking, and then you come around the building, and the arrow goes right out onto Sawmill Road. So there will be additional traffic to Sawmill Road. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Sean. We appreciate you coming in today. Uh, next, I have Michael Rosenblum. Mr. Rosenblum, if you just give your name and address for the record. Michael Rosenblum, 2590 Solomon Road. Uh, the bottom line is when we moved out here maybe 35 years ago, we moved out here for quality of life. Is, is someone that know the bag of potato chips at 2 o'clock in the morning, quality of life? How does that benefit anybody that lives in our neighborhood? Somebody that's going to come there is not from our neighborhood. We're not going there at 2 o'clock in the morning to get gas or to buy a soda. It does not benefit our neighborhood at all. Secondly, if you talk with the Nassau County Police Department at the first stop sign, People speed down that road, they blow through the stop sign, 
There's tickets given all the time because I live at that first stop sign on Sawmill Road. So there's going to definitely be more traffic than there is now. Also, you could build a fence, a six foot fence, a ten foot fence, doesn't make a difference. You could put great shrubbery on it, does not make a difference. If kids come into the parking lot at two o'clock in the morning, you think they're going to turn their cars off and what, turn their radios off? The radios are going to be blasting, they're going to run in, get what they want to get. It does not benefit anybody in our vicinity. Nobody. It benefits somebody that maybe is driving down Soma Road and says, let me get a candy bar. How does that help anybody? It does not. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you for taking time to come in. Uh, next I have Robert Recurso. Good morning, if you give your name and address for the record. My name is Robert Acurso, lived at 2522 Summer Road. I'm like the first house at the, the peak of the triangle. And don't mind me, I'm even more angry than the other one. My parents have lived there for 56 years. I've lived there since 56 almost. It, it's beyond ridiculous. It's, you go to Hicks Hill Road, four miles away, there's gas stations starting from there. Like the woman said, the 7-Eleven is there's, there's four gas, gas stations east of this one. Then there's three the other way. It's like Rite Aid and, 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 and CVS. It's how many do we need? Literally, I could walk to every one of them. My parents moved in in 1966. They, this town had said that the gas station was going away and they were going to make it a little park, a little village green. This town, I'm sorry if you take this personal. You're not here to protect us at all because this is a joke, it's ridiculous. I, I, I'm a retired member of the service. I was down in my life, I've seen a lot of stuff in my life. I'm, I'm emotional right now because this is ridiculous. Like they said, I don't have any kids, but I see the new Fox kids coming into the area. There's so many kids, next to me is eight. I, I've seen over the years, this town is lied and said they were gonna put a, a light at that corner. I can't tell you how many times in 56 years I've seen accidents, car wrecks. The, the Sutton State Parkway is right over. They use Trollsman Avenue as a service road. And at between 2.30 to 7, everybody's coming over for Trollsman because it's not working, flying down Sawmill. I see cops all the time. I talk to them at the corner. Guys stop, if they're going, the car's blowing the stop sign going, West, they stopped my house in the gas station to give the person a ticket. I walk over to a member of service and go, how many today? 20 tickets one day. Blowing the stop sign. School buses. What, 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 how many deaths are going to be on all your conscience? You know, from not having a light. You want the man on little man. How many can cut you? The way the road is, you can't see. And it's so congested, people pulling out. I mean, they were going to, at one point, Town Hensler was going to make Soma one way. So it would relieve track. That didn't happen. The light didn't happen. Like I said, I wish I, I'm computer oriented and I find out the accidents that's been on that corner. Where that triangle meets rules of. It, it's, we need this like a hole in the head. And like I said, I look out, I see how much the gas is going up that day. That triangle. I, don't tell me that uh, lies have already been told. That fuel truck comes in the middle of the night. I work uh, overnight, and I still can't. 13 years retired, I still stay up. I see the trucks come in, pulling in. I hear the dumpster going off. And when I was little, all you heard was, the, if you're old enough as me, the bell would go off when you ran over the line for the, 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 the guy to come out to pump your gas. And three minutes is a joke, too. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming in. Thank you for your service. Uh, next, I have Ann Cunningham.
Good morning, Ms. Cunningham. Forgive your name and address for the record. And it looks like most of my neighbors said what I wanted to say. But I live on 20, uh, 556 Jerusalem Avenue. My garage is on Sawmill Road and my driveway is on Sawmill Road. The, the traffic on Sawmill Road is very, very heavy. And it's a narrow street so that when the cars are parked, sometimes the two lanes are, can't, cannot be open. You know, the cars have to move over to the side lot. And when there are cars parked, it is hard to see getting out of your driveway. Now, if we're going to add more traffic to that, it's going to be impossible getting out of the driveways. So um, I just can't, cannot see any, any more traffic to that road. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Cunningham. Thank you very much for coming in. Next, uh, Tina Pizzullo. Good morning, if you give your name and address for the record. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tina Pizzullo. I'm at 2561 Sawmill Road in North Belmore. My neighbor is in Cunningham. She's right next door to me. I agree with her. The traffic here is terrible. It's horrendous. And if you're going to put a convenience store there for cars to park, to park there, how are they going to get out? Jerusalem Avenue is a bad dream. I'm a New York City resident. I lived in the city almost 30 years. I feel that the, the city is North Belmore now. There is so much traffic, it's not funny. I almost got ran down a couple of times. They speak so fast, it's not funny. And there's no, I asked David Denenberg, I'm on the Sons of Italy also in a few other parts, and I had asked David to put a light right across the street from Colonial when, uh, when he was there. Unfortunately, he passed away. He was a good friend of mine, Claudio. And nothing ever came about. I guess he couldn't do anything about it. I told him, tell the legislator, because my friends, when they come to pick me up to go out, it's, even the kids, anything, it's very hard to uh, get out of it, get out of all that, you know, it's so busy that it's dangerous. So if he would put a light there, the cars would stop and people could go, you know, in their direction. I don't drive because I'm from New York City. There was no place to park a car there. And I never really cared to drive. But when we moved here, I don't even know how or why we got here. Uh, I wanted to learn how to drive. But because of everybody driving so fast and there were so many accidents, and when I go down the southern state, I see all these wreaths. And I said, what's that for? And they said, people died there, they had an accident. I mean, it's so scary. No matter where you drive, it's scary now. It's gotten worse and worse over the years. And uh, I don't know how they're going to get out of the convenience store if they, if they build this thing. And also, I was to the inauguration of the 7-Eleven convenience store. Kate Murray was there. I saw her. I know them from the Sons of Italy. Hi. So uh, they don't need another one. I walk everywhere. Unless I'm going far to the bank or whatever, or I'm going to uh, Eisenhower Park for a concert, I take a cab or I go with friends. But I don't drive because I'm scared. Everybody drives so fast. And nobody does anything about it. So I really, I think what they should do is fix that little house up that's been there 100 years and sell it to somebody that could use it. Fix it up or knock it down and rebuild one instead of a parking lot there. Because I, I don't see how people are going to get out. Jerusalem Avenue is completely full of cars. You cannot even cross the street to go to the post office. And I've seen people get hit. My own dog got hit there. Okay. We had to go in the middle and pick Thank, them up. Thank you, as always, for, for coming in and speaking today. We're very grateful for that. Uh, next, I have. 
Så til vi må starte. Um, we elected or with the clients um, 
pocketbook we elected to purchase the property next door to create a safe parking and circulation area. But looking at the plan, as Mr. Sock mentioned, so the way it's proposed is the, the pass by lanes along the north and south sides of the building would be one way circulation, clockwise circulating around the building. So that if somebody pulled into the property and wanted to park behind the building, they would simply pass by the north side and then park and then leave via the south side and then just get right back to Jerusalem Avenue if that's their destination. Um, in terms of traffic though, I just want to reiterate what Mike Hassan said. Um, specifically, you know, the ITE, which is the Institute of Traffic Engineers, and this board has unfortunately seen me testify on a lot of gas station applications here over the last 15 or 20 years. It is our specialty. In each and every one of those applications where a convenience store is proposed, the conclusions have been quite simple. Convenience stores do not attract new traffic to an area. What they do is draw traffic from the existing roadways. And with the um, other stores that are located to the east and to the west, as the neighbors um, so astutely called out, um, nobody's leaving their house to specifically come to this station to get a convenience item. They've got other choices. However, they will come to the facility to buy gasoline. And if so, what we'd like to do is get them inside and purchase a convenience products item. Can, can, can I say one question? You, you, this is just, you said the convenience store won't attract new traffic, is that right? What was it you said before? Won't attract new traffic to the intersection. Okay. What time right now is the gas station closed? 10 p.m. Okay. And you're proposing to go 24 hours, right? That's correct. Do you think that's going to you know, attract some customers at a different time? Uh, I think with 24-hour uses to the east and the west, I don't think any of the traffic, Mr. Supervisor, will be added to this roadway. I believe the cars are already on the road. I understand the roadway, but, but to that vicinity, it would, it would add a little more traffic, right? There would be additional trips into the facility. Okay. I just, just want to make sure we're all set on the same page. Yeah, the, the concerns I'm hearing, Mr. Supervisor, are more the traffic on the roadways, not into the site. Mr. Sonny, anybody else? Uh, no, that's... Uh, our presentation, we appreciate your patience and appreciate the residents who have spoken and uh, any of them are absolutely invited to call me subsequently. I think that, that's, that's a great representation you make it to everybody here. I think you've seen a lot of residents who are very passionate about the area. Um, it is a county road, not a town road. Uh, so a lot of the concerns are probably, you know, should be for the county portion of it you brought up. But I think it's great that you're willing to have a conversation with a lot of the people that are here uh, in opposition to it. All right, so with that, can I please have a motion? Okay. I move that we uh, close the public hearing. So and uh, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out because you really shed a lot of light on what's going on there from your, just from your testimony alone, whether there was a new gas station going there or not. Uh, we were going to ask for a traffic study course of what you said today, I'm going to ask for a traffic study to be done and see what we can do to make it safer for you, whether we go or not. But my uh, my motion is to reserve decision. Second the motion. Okay. Uh, just so uh, that the residents know, we reserve decision. Um, we're leaving it open for additional comments from the community, emails, or anything else that want to be submitted can and will be made part of the record. I vote uh, to uh, reserve decision on this. And to that point, Supervisor, the petition that was given to me uh, is also made part of the official record. Yeah, and, and in addition, uh, the, the town council made the reference, we are going to reach out to the county, uh, a traffic study as well as lighting there since it is a county roadway. Supervisor, um, you said Supervisor Clayton, you can Aye. Uh, Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman D'Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Aye. I would suggest that maybe you could have another meeting with the residents and see if you could come up with something that could help. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Is that Councilwoman Miller. Aye. And Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Thank you, and thank you for all the residents coming in and making your voices heard today. And thank you, Mr. Sonny, for your presentation. Thank you. Supervisor, uh, if I may, just uh, for the sake of clarification, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, we called both uh, items together. So the vote was on uh, to reserve decision on both items. 
I should have mentioned that both 22 and 23. Thank you. Let, let the record reflect you the uh, very interested on both of those items. Madam Clerk, please call the next item. All right, we have the decision calendar, uh, and we have a resolution adopting a single negative declaration and determination of non significance in connection with an application for a special exception approval for a parcel of land in Baltimore. Okay, I've got a good motion. I move the public hearing be closed. The board adopt the item. In just a moment. Uh, I think you need to. Uh, there's no public hearing. Yeah, that's the clerk would like to do it. There wouldn't be a public hearing anyway. The decision. So it's uh, simply a motion to adopt. Councilman, motion. motion to adopt or. I move the public hearing be closed. The board adopt the item. Councilman, there's no no hearing. Just adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clay. Aye. Councilman Carini. Aye. Councilman Diaz-Cazita. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Boosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarelle. Aye. Aye. Okay. Madam Clerk, just go to the Ministry of Council. Actually, we have one more. Oh, there's one more. I didn't see that. Sorry. 24A, 24. Madam Clerk, please call the next item. Number 24, we have an application on Cruise Lodge at Auto Repair for a special exception a public garage for automotive body repairs in Baltimore. Okay. Anybody have a uh, motion? I move the board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clay. Aye. Councilman Creedy. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Aye. Supervisor Guzli. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muskell. Aye. Madam Clerk, please now call the Yes, we have a Hold on. Okay. Councilman D'Escondido felt, felt like he was, he, he skipped over. Who did I? Sorry. Maybe it was intentional. Nothing but love, Kate. That's right. Councilman D'Escondido, please Okay, now I'm going to ask you to move that administrative calendar. Um, all right. On the administrative calendar, we have items 25 through 60. Okay. okay. Supervisor, uh, before we begin, um, item 56 on the administrative calendar is a calling resolution for an amendment to the building zone ordinance. It consists of uh, two sentences. Um, I'm, it was my understanding that uh, a previous draft of the amendment uh, was uploaded to the calendar and that has since been corrected and the corrected draft is up. But I thought since it's only two sentences long, Madam Clerk, with your permission, I would read the two sentences into the record. Thank you. Section 401, Prohibitions. A, no religious use or educational use may be established or expanded in any use district of the town unless and until a special exception permit has been granted to authorize the same as provided in this article, period. The provisions of this article shall not apply to Article 11E, Educational Cultural Districts E, which shall not be required to obtain special exception permits. That's the entirety of it. Thank you. Very, very well done. Um, any member of the board wish to sever or speak on any item administrative calendar? Okay, I have a couple of slips. We'll start off with uh, our very own Phyllis McCutcheon. Good afternoon, Mr. McCutcheon. Can you give me your name, address, and record? Phyllis McCutcheon, Franklin Square. On numbers 48 and 50, um, we're repurposing Federal CARES Act money. Um, my question is, why does the Town Highway Department, Sanitation Department, Refugee Disposal Department, Parks and Operating Fund Department, and Water Fund need additional Federal CARES Act funds? And the corollary is, why don't we offer, if this is a legitimate use of Federal CARES funds to give it to these sort of departments, why don't we offer this, these funds to the village's parks department, the village's highway department, you know, and so yeah. on. But, but you, we did, yeah, that. we did re reimburse the villages. With no, but you didn't give any way near the, the amount no, no, of no, 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 just, uh, saying, you, you, you said there were lots of expenses included in a lot of their submissions and included a lot of these things. So, yeah. so that, just so you know, the, the villages were included and they chose what their submissions were 
and some of it will just submit it for fire department portions, some submitted it for the parks, some submitted it for the operation sanitation. So I, I just want you to know it, it was. No, no, but as to your no, that's okay. thing, but just to just to clarify that like No, I, I, I did just no, clarify. Mr. Massimarino, could, could you potentially uh, answer his, his first question? I was able to clarify the second one for him. When we received the uh, federal CARES money, we contacted the villages and they provided listings of eligible expenditures. We vetted all of those claims and we made many, many um, grants to the villages based upon what they, uh, what they needed. <coughs> Uh, since then, the villages have gotten <coughs> literally millions of dollars of CARES funding. What this is attempting to do is to offset expenses that the town did not take CARES money for. Uh, and in its audit process, going through all of the claims that were submitted, there were items that were not quali qualified. So the, uh, this is an administrative responsibility to say we can't give you that money we are taking back that that grant and we are offsetting claims and expenses that we incurred that we did not put through the cares funding thank you yeah I, I understand that the, the okay. thing is but like just I'll give you a concrete example so maybe you could explain this concrete example that you're just talking in generality I know that the Garden, Village of Garden City got some federal CARES funds, but it was not for any bathroom renovations. Yet we did literally millions and millions of dollars of bathroom renovations with federal CARES money. Why didn't we let the villages know, for example, that they could have asked? I mean, there, there was no evidence in the, in the CARES Act law that said that you could renovate bathrooms with federal CARES money, yet that's what we did. We should have informed villages which probably didn't know that you could renovate your bathroom through Federal CARES Act money. That's just one example. And we did a lot of things like we cleaned a sewer pipe with Federal CARES Act money. We should have let them know that you could clean your, your plumbing pipes with Federal CARES Act I don't think too many, read, if you just read the law, the Federal CARES Act law, which it did, you would not know that. And I think that since we somehow knew that you were allowed to get away with doing that, we should have said, hey, you could renovate your bathrooms, you could clean your sewer pipes with Federal CARES Act money, just make an application for it. That's my point. Okay. No, but, oh, it, hold on. So you're saying, let me get this straight. So your comment is that we somehow knew, and, and you're agreeing with it because you said you read the, the Federal CARES law, right? So it sounds to me that the town of Hempstead, and the what, can I finish? It sounds, it sounds to me that the town of Hempstead and the controller's office and everyone that was involved in distributing the federal CARES money did their due diligence, because apparently they read the same law as you and knew exactly how the money could be allocated. You, you twisted what I said. No, I didn't twist it. I actually well, took I a, I've spent my lifetime sitting across I, I, people I, I, and listening I, I, to what they said. I know what I said. So that I, I know exactly what you said. You said that you read the law, and then you said that somehow we also read the law. So it sounds to me that everyone who was involved in distributing the federal CARES funding throughout the town of Hempstead to hospitals, to villages, fire departments, police departments, schools, uh, mobile vaccination units, yeah. testing. Seems like the job was done the right way, so yeah. kudos to all of you. Thank you. You have to twist everything around. Thank you. They are getting no way. Thank you very much. Mr. Couch, thank, thank you very much. It was great to have you. All right, next I have Bonnie Garone. Good afternoon. If you can name an address for the record. Bonnie Garone, Rockville Center. Um, as to item 43, this appears to be uh, approving agreements that already were given to about 25 people uh, to be uh, physical fitness instructors uh, this summer. Can you tell us how um, those positions were advertised, if they were, and how these people were selected? Um, is our Parks Commissioner? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. members of the board. Uh, Ms. Garone, we did not advertise them. We re-entered into contract because we have special services contracts with these instructors, and we've had great success with them in the future show in the past. So we wanted to go into the future with them using the same ones. 
That's what you've said uh, in the past with respect to these kinds of agreements uh, right. for other instructors. So you're telling me that the roster of instructors never changes. Uh, well, you know, the same people every year are instructors. Never need a new one. Did, did you actually say you never need a new one? You got, never got new ones? I never said that. I, excuse me. I, I didn't finish. You, well, no, you, 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 you know, Ms. Crow, Ms. Crow. You made a representation. You said something that wasn't accurate. So I just want to make sure it was clear. You never said those things. Thank you so much. No, no problem. I appreciate that. Uh, if you if you never need a new one, uh, how do you get? If you ever need a new one, how are the new people selected? And if you have this stable roster of people that you hire every year, how did you find them in the first place? These were the instructors that were in place when I assumed the position of commissioner, and uh, since then they haven't changed. And how many years is that? Two and a half years. And does anyone know uh, how they were hired? If it's the same, you're telling me it's the exact same roster as when you were hired. Is, is, is there a particular instructor or physical activity you, you would like us to, to you know, dive into? No, I'd like you to dive into making these jobs and these opportunities open to all town residents instead of hiring the same people as you Excuse me, as you say every year, I never advertise in any of these positions. We do. We advertise lots of positions. And, and frankly, I'm going to tell you, when, when you run a program and you have somebody that's good at it and people like them, let it be, you know, uh, a physical, you know, instructor down at our seniors or lacrosse camp, and if they're positive, wouldn't you want to retain that person? Like, you know, I'll give you a case in point. Um, my kids are at Caniac doing a lacrosse camp. And they have some really good instructors there, and they come back every single year. And they are able to deal with my older 15-year-old to, to my slightly more needy 9-year-old, like, fantastically. And I find it to be such a blessing. And I'm very, you know what, and it's funny, I, I kind of said to the guy, geez, you should go elsewhere. And he's like, oh, they, they really like me and we're connected. And that, that's one of the reasons that you, you hold on. If you have somebody that's good at something, you want to hold on to them. And it, and it creates a great vibe for the parents that use the program over their lifetime. You have families that are dropping off kids and the film that you know, being familiar with that person and knowing them. And especially when it comes to the children, not every child's alike. You know, my children are significantly different from my, you know, my oldest daughter to, to my second, who's just like me, and then to my, my son, who you know what, he's just a little little bit, he's a he's a nine-year-old crazy boy. But they know those campers or those instructors know them. So I find it that, you know, it's a real plus when you have that, that, that person that's familiar with the, these young kids. And a lot of this is, is that kind of thing. Let it be younger kids or, or any of our older programs. I think being able to retain somebody is a significant benefit, really, with a lot of these programs. I think that was a very heartwarming story. Um, <laughs> no, it's not a story. It's not my kid. It's my life. I'm not a story. I'm just saying it's, it, it's, it is, I'm saying I see it firsthand. I see it firsthand in a lot of this stuff with, with people who love a program instructor and they actually will come back because of that instructor and that's, that's why, you know, we have really great pro programs in our parks and we're very successful because we have good instructors who do these programs that really connect with all these from adults to middle age to, to younger. So, so I, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in, in, you know, if you can retain somebody, you do that. I think you should retain people who are good, but I want to know is how were they hired in the first place? How did you know they were good? How did you find these people if you never advertise these jobs? No, we, but we do advertise jobs. They do advertise <laughs> yeah. jobs. Yeah. So they, I, first of all, I, I think you explained uh, the quality and the, uh, the desire to retain the quality people perfectly. But I wanted to add in direct response to this Jerome that over a period of time, uh, these people are recruited by the town or they apply to the town. and they have to have a, a very specific set of skills, for example, a little cross camp. Um, and if you look right now what's happening, uh, not just in the town of Benson, but in the county of Nassau, the county of Suffolk, the other townships with lifeguards, they are asked to return every year. They apply for the job after they get certified as lifeguards. And yet right now there is a lifeguard shortage. So any prior town of Hempstead lifeguard is requested to come back and work another summer. The same is true for anyone who is, for example, teaching lacrosse or teaching soccer. They are instructors who have proven themselves, have relationships with the families who utilize those parks or who choose to go to that park for those camps. 
We're lucky to get them. These are not uh, specialized. These are specialized positions with uh, very specific uh, requirements. And unless you, if you if you know of anybody who wants to be an instructor, I would suggest that you tell them to contact the park commissioner because it's difficult to retain very good people and have them come back every summer. And that's what we're seeking. I have to give you credit, you guys are very good at this, uh, evading the question and then giving speeches about how terrific everything is that you've done. Do you ever advertise, do you ever ever, have you advertised in recent memory for any, uh, other than lifeguards, for any of the summer uh, agreements, as you call them, for uh, programs in our parks or other things. Have you, does anyone remember ever letting the public at large know that you're looking for people to fill these spots? In my two and a half years, ma'am, I haven't seen the need yet. But certainly if it was necessary, we would. Uh, does anyone know whether prior to the past two and a half years, did anybody in, in, in your memory uh, recall ever advertising and letting the public know that any of these positions were open for application? Well, I so actually, Ms. Corona, just the example that I used, in addition to the examples that Supervisor Clayton used, should be uh, proof that we actually have done that. We have aggressively uh, advertised and recruited lifeguards because of the lifeguard shirt. Wait, 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 let me finish, please. Because you were asking a very specific question. We have aggressively recruited and advertised that we are hiring lifeguards because we need lifeguards. And when someone has proven themselves and been a good lifeguard pool or ocean or whatever, uh, they're going to be automatically asked to renew next season, uh, the next opportunity that comes up. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't have anybody to teach these classes or to guard our pools. You said you were answering a very specific question. My very specific question was, other than lifeguards, in anyone's memory, can you recall advertising for any other of these parks, uh, summer programs, uh, positions, and letting the public know that you were open to receiving that. I think the commissioner, Anybody? I think, oh, don't look, the council, the deputy supervisor says you just. Okay, <laughs> when I go into my districts, which I'm always in, I let people know what we need, and many of them know me already, so this is the thing, we have four new uh, people that are coming in this summer. You know, our parks. And that's because we tell them, they send in whatever it is that we need, and contact the person who works in his other district. And that's how we have them. We have four or five new people this year that will be in the parks, and I think you're going to do it. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Supervisor. I said yeah. thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I'd just like to say this. I'm looking at the list, we have like 26 people, all with specialization on certain type of activities. Um, Deputy Supervisor mentions that she speaks to the community. So maybe we do get them from word of mouth. They're getting a couple of hundred dollars for things like Zumba, uh, uh, karate, and, and all these things. So that's the way it's done sometimes. Sometimes it's just word of mouth. Nobody's getting rich on this. It's just basically a labor of love and things that they like to do and very creative and specific. And that's well, basically very it. highly specialized. I, I recall that. Um, I thank you very much. Deputy Supervisor, but nobody else remembers doing this. Thank you, Mr. Rohn. Always a pleasure. Next, I have uh, uh, Dorothy Claus. Ms. Claus, you come up to the front. Are you asking a question on the administrative calendar, or is it just a, a, a general topic? It's the same old story. Okay. Uh, it, so it's, it's, if it's not on the administrative calendar, you want us to call it, wait until we call the miscellaneous, and I'll have you speak first? because we're just doing the calendar right now. Can you wait one second? No, okay. Okay, all right then. We'll let you, we'll let you go then. Yep. Here we go. The floor is yours. I received a letter from you County Executive on Saturday in response to my property, my lot change. Now, it states 
Dorothy Fretnell. My name is Dorothy R. Claus, 682 Cardin Street, Union Bill. Good day, everyone. It said Dorothy Fret, 682 Cardin Street, Union Bill, New York. Reference section 50, block 125, block 11, because that's what's on my D because we all needed four digits to your computer, you added two zeros in front of the 11. Didn't complain. Now, you said the assessment office, who is Nassau County, wanted five digits. So they added a zero behind the 11. So it's zero, zero, one, one, zero, which is 110. That means my lock number has been changed. Here, it says, <coughs> my site is in here. Also known as Castle 50125 so they also stated the zero was added as a filler, but my property did not need a suffix, but it's a filler, just in case a suffix is needed later on. Then they go down in another paragraph, dump it in, and they say they've been using this computer system for the last 20 years because of your assessment, blah, blah, blah. This was sent, letter was also sent to Honorable Kevin Abrams and Honorable Dorothy Booster. I also gave a few of the members up there this morning copies that I made of this letter. Because the taxes are paid here in Nassau County, I pay to Hempstead. In the first place, I'm no longer Dorothy Fred. My husband is dead. I'm the Castro, maiden name, or clause. Since you all can't do anything, I'm taking this outside of Nassau County because I've run around since last year yep. and this year yep. about my home. Okay. So I'm going to take it outside. I understood. Um, the, the last thing is that I know uh, Ms. Randall is here back there. Um, can we confirm that a, a change of name has been submitted for documentation? I have a bill of reflector where I want to know that. I appreciate that very much as always. Thank you, Ms. Clough. Uh, with that, I don't have a sign it for the administrative calendar. May I please have a motion? Second. Supervisor Clayman. Aye. Councilman Greeny. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Beasley. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. And Councilman Muscle. Aye. Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn? Supervisor, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Queenie. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscle. Aye. Is, did, was that call? Oh, uh, it was definitely intentional. Good. The, uh, <laughs> the I can understand the missing tennis. I guess that's a problem. Right? All right. Now the formal portion of the program has been adjourned. <laughs> the town board remains to listen to the comments of the residents, and we'll start off with Felix Prakashi. Good afternoon, Mr. Picasso. You your name and address for Phillips Picasso, Franklin Square. On June 8, 2021, I filed a lawsuit against the town of Hempstead because the town did not respond to my FOIL appeals, violating state law. When the press asked the Clayton administration to comment on this matter, town spokesman Greg Lower characterized the lawsuit as a baseless partisan attack. In response to the so-called baseless partisan attack, the town attorney's office hired outside counsel to defend the town. It is important to note that in all the court documents and correspondence submitted by the town, 
The town's outside counsel never characterized this case as baseless. Eight months later, on February 9, 2022, the town offered to reimburse me for my court costs and provide the records I requested, proving that I had prevailed. The facts discovered in this case show this was not a baseless partisan attack, but was a legitimate legal response to the town's refusing to abide by the law. In particular, the town attorney's office refused to abide by the law. At the last meeting, Supervisor Clavin said I had crossed the line by accusing town attorney Nocella of being unethical. In Clavin's meandering statement, he never specifically addressed the unethical actions I accused Mr. Nocella of, but instead spoke in platitudes. Clavin did not defend Mr. Nocella's failure to ensure his department properly handled FOIL appeals. Clavin did not defend Mr. Nocella's failure to properly execute his duties duties as an ethics board member. In each of these instances, Ms. Nocella, a judicial candidate, had chosen to do nothing to ensure the town abides by the law. The proverbial line that supervisor claims I had crossed has to do with what he feels is appropriate at a public meeting. While I tried to communicate my concerns with Ms. Nocella in private, but Mr. Nocella just ignored me. He just walked away from me and he ignored my emails. It is not unreasonable to expect an attorney to follow the law. And if a town attorney does not follow the law, it is not unreasonable to say that that attorney lacks the ethical qualities to be a judge. If anyone feels differently, please do not respond with platitudes. Be specific. Um, one more. Also, Greg Lower, the town spokesperson, of course, also, Mr. Clavin, do you feel that Greg Blower, the town spokesman, crossed any line when he misled residents about the nature of my lawsuit calling it a baseless partisan attack? Thank you. It was a pleasure, Mr. Bacacci. Uh, next, I have Tom Perry. <coughs> Tom Perry? Yeah, I'm here. Mr. Perry, why don't you come up and make it a little easier for that? Yeah. Just give me name and address for the record. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Monty Python used to say, and now for something completely different that you've never heard of. I have something that I want to sell to the town of Hempstead that you've never heard of. It's a science called Magneto Hydrodynamics. What that is, is very specialized, powerful magnetic units. Here is one, it's an old one. It goes on few lines to your uh, boiler, oil or natural gas. This is a very old science, it should be taught in high school. First patent came out in 1869. The Library of Congress has 18,300 patents on MHD. I uh, have showed this uh, information to uh, Mr. Dominic Lombardi and uh, other people have told me that I should go to a council meeting and make you aware of this technology. When these powerful magnets go on the fuel line to a boiler or a furnace, it makes oxygen stick to the fuel better and you get a better, more complete burn and you have uh, less carbon emissions. These units pay for themselves in two or three years. And uh, people tell me uh, this can't be true because they've never heard of it. Uh, so I came uh, to this meeting to tell you about what I have. I can save the town of Hempstead 20 to 25% of their heating bill for this building and every building they have simply by installing four of these units on a fuel line to a boiler or furnace. Uh, it's that simple. I'm going to all the towns and counties. I get a lot of pushback because people just don't want to be bothered with learning about something they've never heard of before. So this is step one, me going to the council. Should I provide you, mail you with uh, some information to explain this? 
Yeah, well, Mr. Perry, uh, like I said, I would actually, I'll, I'll get your name and address at the end of this, and I'll get you in contact with, contact with our conservation uh, team, uh, because a lot of people said you could use hydrogen to fuel, and now we're actually in the cutting edge down there, Kate Murray put a hydrogen station almost 15 years ago, and now we're working with Toyota to hydrogen fuel vehicles. So I'll be delighted to take your name and number and get you in contact with our conservation department uh, because we're actually working with uh, several big entities on hydrogen fueling. So maybe stick around here. Uh, yeah. Bobby Geese, uh, he's in the back seat. He's going to take your name and number and I'll have somebody call you from the conservation department because, like I said, we're, we're sort of working on okay. a lot of projects. The conservation department. Yeah, the conservation. But Robert Geese back there, he'll, he's going to get your name and address at the end of this. And I'll have somebody from the department contact you to go in and talk to you about it. All right, but also, uh, I guess I should... Uh, to uh, public works or facilities, I guess I should be talking to them both or only conservation. Just, just right now, it's our conservation, okay. and, and we'll follow up, okay? All right. Thank you very much for your attention. He's right, he's right back there for you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Bonnie Garone. Bobby, got it? You got it, correct? Thank you. That's it, Mr. Brooke. Bonnie Garone, Rockville Center. As you know, redistricting of the town's council districts is required uh, after the most recent federal census. I'd like to know, and I believe residents are entitled to know, when you will be undertaking the redistricting process and how you will be informing and including residents uh, to ensure that the process is open and fair. I hope, I sincerely hope, that you're not planning to create the maps in darkness, keeping them secret until three days before the board meeting where you will vote on them, as you do with most board items, uh, because I think the town residents deserve better than that. Where the council lines are drawn is important, and some would say that recently uh, the public saw that in two very, uh, two very different uh, items. Number one, would Baldwin residents have suffered from such a long, drawn-out process for a downtown revitalization if Baldwin had one representative to deal with and responsible to it instead of being carved up into three different council districts? Would Elmont have needed representatives outside of town government to advocate to get Elmont Road Park open if Elmont had one representative responsible to it instead of being divided between two districts? and lumped in with Garden City, Atlantic Beach, and other communities with which it has little in common? The maps matter, and the public should be involved. For example, the town of North Hempstead this year had a bipartisan redistricting commission. I really hope you're listening. Uh, had a bipartisan redistricting commission and multiple public hearings for residents to view proposed maps and have input. This board should do no less than that. As to timing, the last time redistricting of the town was done was in 2013. And at that time, the uh, districts, the redistricting was voted on in April, effective in June in 2013, so that the new lines were in place for the town election that November. But back in 2013, the primary elections were in September. Now, the primary elections are in June. So next year, the town uh, election year, the primary will likely be in June, with designating petitions likely starting in March. As a result, redistricting must be done much earlier than you did it last time around. So now is the time to be talking about this and to get the public involved. Can you tell us what your plans are? Well, Ms. Rowan, I think that, uh, I don't want to speak for everyone on this board, but I think for me personally, I think that uh, if we make sure that we don't follow any of the direction of the New York State Democrats and what they've done over the last year uh, with completely disenfranchising voters to the point where Supreme Court judges and judges from the appeals court had to throw out their maps, uh, I think if we take the step and avoid anything that they did, I think the members of the residents of the town of Hempstead will be in good shape. Thank you for that political commercial. Well, I mean, you, your point, you're painting the picture that, uh, that the town of Hempstead is, is operating under the cloak of darkness, which is clearly not the case. And what we saw over the last few months is that uh, the Democratic Party in New York State did exactly that. And when they said that they were trying to include everyone, in fact, disenfranchised 
thousands upon hundreds of thousands of voters in New York State. Thank you, candidate Diaz Esposito. But what I said was, I hope you're not going to do it in darkness. And I asked you when you're going to do it and how you're thank, going to do it. Thank, thank As you, an answer, Mr. Rowe, thank you so much. And, and, and I, I will let go. We will absolutely see exactly what New York State did, and we will do our best not to follow their absolute disaster and take it to court and lose every single battle. Um, so thank you as always. Uh, next I have, uh, uh, let's see, we have Pearl Jenkins. What are you going Pearl, to Oh, thank you so much again. Thanks, Mr. Rowe. Take care. Have a great, happy 4th of July. But now we have Pearl Jacobs. Thank you so much. More residents. Happy 4th of July to you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, my gosh. Good job. Good afternoon. Your name and address for the record, Ms. Jacobs. Thanks. Yes, Pearl Jacobs, Uniondale. Um, I would like to at least give you a thanks for this mailing you sent out regarding fireworks safety and townships at Nassau County. Um, fireworks are a big problem, a huge problem in Nassau County, town of Hempstead. Um, it's like living in a war. Okay. It's okay. No problem. My body. Uh, I would like to thank uh, John Conroy and John Lipinski uh, for supporting and uh, their hard work in supporting Vinnie Dale to bring about positive quality of life transformation. They work very hard. Their teams work very hard, and we appreciate all that they do. I have a question. Town of Hempstead streetscaping improvement signage has remained on Front Street for almost one year now. And when will this proposed project commence? I have spoken with Senator Thomas's office and was informed that they would reach out to the Town of Hempstead. Any update on that proposed? Well, after me, I have to have John Rockett, the commissioner, to talk to you after me. Is he here? John, raise hand. There he is. Can you speak on this, sir? No, Ms. Jacobs, we've come for a long time. We're going to listen to you when I said he'll make himself available after the meeting point. Well, why can't he speak now? Cause, cause why can't he answer I, my question now? I'm asking. I'm Ms. asking. Ms. Jacobs, I've, I've, I've clearly said he's going to be available to talk to you after the meeting. But I don't have time after the meeting. I want my question answered. You, you have a, a minute, 47 seconds left. You can, it won't be that long. No, why can't he answer my question? Yeah. Everyone else had their question answered in public. Why can't my question answer, be answered in public? Am I being discriminated against? Uh, Ms. Jacobs, not at all. I'm just all. asking. Why can't well, my well, question well, I'm telling you, I just gave an answer. I'm just answering. So now he'll speak right after. He's going to talk to you right after. So I hope this is on record and everybody watches that I can't have my question answered in public. No, actually, the CR record that I'm actually making the commissioner available. California right. Avenue. Severe ponding continues to languish on California Avenue, directly across from the California Avenue Elementary School. Dirty, stagnant water is a health and safety issue for our children and for everyone else. I have sent emails to your office, Councilwoman Gilsby, and copied you in, and also Supervisor Clavey, regarding this issue. They were never answered, of course. And when will this health and safety issue be addressed? When will it be addressed? Well, it's this stagnant water that, that language. I, I haven't. I have seen it. Oh, no, listen, I, I'm going to give you your answer. Now. I haven't seen it, and thanks for bringing the attention. I'm going to have my engineering head find out for you, and we'll, we'll get your response. Okay, we appreciate I, that. Thank you very much. you and Council ah, Moogles Oh, by the way, I, I, I don't know if you actually heard Deputy Supervisor Moogles um, I'm not here to massage anyone's ego. I'm here to fight for Uniondale and to get results for Uniondale. Can I have a can I answer that question? What, the, what is the role and responsibility? We, I just I just I just actually answered the question where I said. What, what, no, this is a different question. What are the roles and responsibility of a deputy supervisor? Ms. Jacobs, we continue. Okay. You brought it up. I'm not here to massage anybody's ego. I'm here to get a job done in the media. Thank you. Thank you very very much. We appreciate it as always. Um, next, I have Diane Ben. Diane Madden, Hempstead. Um, there was a lot of talk about specialized physicians earlier, and um, the animal shelter, there is no department in this town that requires a more specialized physician than the director. Um, I don't want the board to take my presence here, because at some point, 
I hope that the animal shelter proves so much that it won't require so much public outcry and making the board aware of what's going on at that animal shelter that continues to. Um, I hope the supervisor, who apparently is looking to take the shelter in a different direction, uh, won't require a lot more evidence. I don't know how much more evidence will be needed that we need a compassionate, humane, kind, knowledgeable, experienced, open-minded director at the shelter. And that's when the problems will get resolved. As far as the backlog um, and the continued backlog of uh, applications, people are coming in there. Uh, we have to be glad they're adopting. People can't feed their families with groceries, inflation, and gas, and yet you have the public coming in to adopt animals. They should be, it should be as smooth as silk. Instead, there are obstructions, backwards policies, um, backdated applications where the public's not hearing from uh, the shelter for maybe up to a week, five to seven days. I want to let the board know that there are many capable people in the front office that have been cross-trained, not by Mr. Pastore, but before that they were cross-trained for the purpose uh, to make sure that applications like that were not sitting where applicants then go on to adopt elsewhere. At this time, the programs at the animal shelter should be being optimized, not raised from the ashes as they are. And again, I ask this board, Mr. Pastore serves at your pleasure. I don't know how much of a pleasure it's been, but it's been no pleasure for animals, employees, the public, and you can see that all over social media. I do thank the board members who got involved with Zena's rescue. She would have sat there with a rash untreated and not in a foster home, a permanent home where she is. Um, the shelter decided to make it a dog and pony show as if they did anything other than pick up a video camera and pretend they did it. I hope your involvement continues, Supervisor. That is going to make all the difference in the world. Currently, as you may or may not know, Mr. Pastore doesn't care that the phones aren't being answered at the animal shelter. He doesn't care that adoptions are backlogged. The amount of injuries, the lawsuits that we're paying for, by the way, that are all preventable. There's no experts. Every department has no real leadership in it. Um, and the problems, once again, are, are rising uh, in the volunteer program. As always, I appreciate your, your, your passion and, and information that no one's ever well, when someone passes something on, I'll uh, just say it's never burdened, and no one should ever look at it that way. And I appreciate uh, you working with people. Um, with that, I'm going to bring up uh, Chris Jacobs. Thank you, Supervisor. Thank you, Thank you the work, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Your name is Addison Rucker. Chris Jacobs, and of New York. I have a letter um, that I've gotten from the department of highways regarding a catch basin by my home in Uniondale. Um, the letter states, Dear Sir Madam, this will supplement our last communication with you relative to the storm drain in front of your home. Inspection revealed the catch basin is deteriorating. The work required is beyond the investi investigatory scope of this department. We are referring to this matter of the engineering department for review and inclusion into the requirements for contract for repair. I imagine the engineering department to contact you directly with their findings. Um, that was signed by Gregory Colorossi, Commissioner Highways. As of now, this letter was sent to my home on May 2nd, 2022. And as of now, which is almost July, we haven't no, we have got, haven't gotten any contact from the commission, um, the engineering department. So I would like to know when the work would commence on my so, uh, catch basin by my home, which is falling apart, is separating from the sidewalk right now, and it's dangerous to the kids. I've seen kids get their bikes stuck in there as kids jump the curb and stuff like that, and also small animals getting stuck in there. So I would like to know when the work is going to commence. I can't answer any questions about that, but I now have my bill that my engineering commissioner has raised his hand right there, and after you done speaking, he's going to go to the back and talk to you directly. Okay, that's right. great. Thank you. Not a problem. Thanks for coming in today. You too. Michael Romano? My left. And uh, Marsha Gutierrez. Good afternoon, Washington, GTA, America, New York. 
I did have a slip in on the administrative calendar, item 47, emergency removal of trees instead of emergency planting. I don't know if you can answer that after. Um, regarding my comments, I would like to know if your supervisor received any of my messages regarding meeting with you. I would feel it would be much more beneficial if we were able to have a, a conversation and possibly a solution to the never-ending removal of healthy trees, mostly by developers. I state the devastating facts of healthy tree removal at every meeting, never getting a response. And when Councilwoman Miller said a tree cannot be removed without a permit relating to June 14th administrative calendar, numbers 15 through 18, it would have been nice to get a response when I inquired about her comment. Have laws changed to benefit the environment? Do the town of Hempstead laws now coincide with the town of North Hempstead and Oyster Bay, stating that no healthy tree can be removed from a property without just cause, a permit, and con consequences? Or were these items single dwellings that the four mentioned developers want to subdivide and remove all of the trees as they do with every property board? Who can I speak with to set up a meeting Nobody. to discuss um, what's with the town attorney for these past three years, even including Legislator McKevitt, who can speak on the county working with the town to benefit the constituents from his district, which is one of the top three areas of destruction. If preservation laws from the town have changed, can someone answer that question for me now? And lastly, when approached last meeting by the commissioner of the animal shelter, I thought that it would be nice if some of the emails received by the town were regarding all of the animals for adoption, need for volunteers, more foresters, and most of all, socialization to get them out of their prison cells and into loving homes. I haven't seen any email communications, and that is wrong. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now, is, uh, I, I, a gentleman right in the front row, my chief of staff, Jack Liver, right there. He's going to follow up there for the meeting. And what about the administrative calendar? Yeah. Of the I, can't, I, I can't answer that because we, we, we passed it already. Uh, there was no sign-in for the administrative yeah, calendar on that. But, yes. but, but after all, I'll ask Joe Nacella, my town attorney, to talk to you about uh, that. So he's not going to go over with it. So you got Jack and Joe. And Councilwoman Miller, that was misinformation. I don't know. No. We got that. I can't, I can't speak to that. So, but, but thank you very much. Uh, so Jack and Joe, I appreciate that you, both of you talked with her. I don't have any other slips in.